the market's gotten a little, and a lot of these stocks have gotten a little ahead of themselves on what will turn out to be false hopes. So we're in this moment right now, and we've been in this moment uh, for, for a little while, where we're back to higher interest rates on, let's say, the two-year, the 10-year, negative for a certain type of stock, big stocks, important stocks. Um, but then when those rate fears ease for the day, it's like a green light to go out and buy them. It's very reminiscent, Judge, and, and you'll probably remember this, of the risk on, risk off stuff from 2011, 2012, when on a Monday it would look like uh, Europe is Armageddon, and then the next day European currencies would rally, and there would be this like whole group of stocks you could just blindfold yourself and buy any of them. We're doing that now with interest rates, and it's fun, it's interesting. Eventually, everyone learns the game and it stops working. But look at today. You get, this, you get the rate fears cool off a little bit. What are your top three leadership groups? Surprise, to surprise. Real estate, number one, up 1% on the day. Consumer discretionary, number two, up almost 1%. Uh, number three is industrials, number four is tech. It's like surprise, surprise. So today Russell. is, so here's what <laughs> I wanna do. I wanna coin the term. We're gonna call it cut on, cut off. Today is a cut on day, right? You got a little bit of easing in, in rates. People are a little bit more sanguine about, you know, what's happening with the inflation story and they'll let these stocks run. If you get something that seems to be negative on the inflation front or tomorrow's jobs report is a blowout number or average hourly earnings are way ahead of, of schedule, you're gonna see it be a cut off market. And you're gonna see industrials down big, they'll crush the real estate names, they'll hit consumer discretion. So this is the new game. I hope you all learn it. I hope we can have this game for, I don't know, a, a, as many weeks as we have until June, July, and then eventually it'll end. But that's what's happening right okay. now. And you could you could track it yourself on your screen. So if, if it's that binary, cut right, on today. As, as, you, as you suggest, right? Rates up and you know cut off, rates down, yeah. Uh, cut on. So, Liz, do you, do you feel like we are vulnerable? Whether it's Kerry expressing it through selling or trimming some names that have gone up a lot on these hopes. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh laid it out pretty well. The market is obviously super sensitive at this moment about higher interest rates because it's traded a little uneasy as rates have backed up. Well, they're back off, and here we are green again. Yep, and if you look at something like the move index, which is the volatility in yields, that's gone up quite a bit this week. And even though we have a little bit of a back off in yields today, we're still up 15 basis points in the 10 year this week. That is a huge move in Treasury yields. So far, it's been a short term change in trend, meaning yields up, stocks down. That's the change in trend. The year to date period saw yields up, stocks up. So I don't think it's definitive yet that that's what's occurring, but I do think that the market is gonna run out of patience for this waiting period. We somehow digested going from six cuts to three cuts very easily, and at some point we continue to keep pushing these back. I think really the bigger risk, what we are at risk for, is a reheating and a reacceleration in inflation that extends beyond the February numbers because those were explained away by seasonality. If we get hotter inflation for March, we get hotter inflation for April, I think you're gonna start to hear conversations about actually hikes coming back into play and that will make people very That nervous. would be super cut off. That would be <laughs> way cut off. Well, look, you, you've, you've just <laughs> talked about, uh, it was weeks and weeks ago, about the biggest risk you see is the possibility that we do have reigniting in yes, inflation that is or than people think and then the fed's got to either act on that or just keep rates much higher for much longer than even people suggest that is the risk and i think if you listen to what the fed had to say the last time they uh they had the presser they were basically like look a strong labor market alone in and of itself is not going to interfere with us doing what we think we need to do on the interest rate side i don't think the market believes them quite frankly so i would be looking to tomorrow and don't worry about headline. So we're looking for 216,000 jobs. Don't worry so much about that, uh, because if that's at 300,000, no one's gonna fall out of a window. Look at average uh, hourly earnings. Look at hours work. Like, look at the stuff that's really gonna filter into PCE in the near term. That's the stuff where the market really might not like it, to Liz's point. Uh, she's exactly right. And I, re I remain of the thinking, Earnings are not the risk. It's just, it, it just isn't. International stuff is not the risk. This is the risk that the Fed says, you know what? One more wouldn't kill anyone. And we're back to talking about when is the next 25 basis point hike. I don't think we're there yet. I just think if you want to worry about something, that's the thing you should worry about. So how should we view the markets here? Well, as Josh has said, it's tomorrow is a big 
big for near-term trading. But one thing I like what I've seen within the CME Group's Fed Watch tool is, is you have a 55 to 60 percent probability of three cuts this year. So it's not like it's really fully priced in. So the market is being prepared for some hotter data. Now, in the last couple of days, again, to your point, and the, the, the cut on as jobless claims a little higher than expected, services data a little lower than expected. But with all of this happening, CPI and PPI have started to nudge up a bit. And I look at three being a trend. We've only had two. So I think the next couple of weeks here are going to be absolutely cr crucial for this market.